Hello everyone, I'm Catherine Decina Saplin, and today I'm doing a response to a comment that I got from Isaiah. Hi, thanks for the comment, which was in response to my video, Study Abroad, A Nightmare in France, which, yeah, my first year abroad really just sucked. Isaiah stated that when he went to France, specifically Paris, he knew the language beforehand, which got me thinking of three questions, which I want to pose to you guys. First off, have you gone abroad? If so, were you there for school? Were you there for work? Or were you just living there either through retirement or maybe you married into the culture? Second, did you study the language beforehand? And third, if yes or no, did you find it helpful or not? From my own personal experience, I've gone abroad to three different countries, France, China, and Belgium. I found that the times where I've studied the languages beforehand has really just, you know, blown up in my face and has not been as helpful as I would have liked it to be. But that's just me. I don't, I don't know about you. That's why I pose these questions and love to hear back from you guys. Before I went to France the first time, I had three years of French in high school. I'm gonna have to do a whole video about the uselessness of language classes because I learned useless things like there is a monkey in a tree, there is a cow on the book. I really wish this wasn't true, but after seven years of living in France, one day my cat brought in a mouse and the mouse went under the table and me, my head just exploded and I screamed, literally screamed guys, il y a une souris en sous la table. There's a mouse under the table because this is one of those phrases I learned in French class and I never got to use, except for that one time in France when my cat brought in a mouse and the mouse ran under the table. And <laughs> I can't wish this wasn't true, but that, that really does rank as one of the best moments of my life because I look at all the time that I spent in French classes and literally all the stuff that I learned was completely useless. Every useful thing that I learned in French, I taught to myself while living in France. It's just, it's sad, it really is. My second experience when it comes to language was when I went to China and I worked a tiny itty, itty, itty little bit in Mandarin. And I ended up going to China because my English professor was Chinese and she started this little exchange between our university and the university that she had gone to. And we stayed with the lingual students at the university. You know, the thing with language students is they're not going to let something like language get in the way of communicating with another person. So I had an amazing time. It didn't matter that my Mandarin sucked. I was able to communicate with people in English, in French, with really horrible Mandarin on my part, and I had a blast. Now, that being said, I didn't stay there that long, so I don't feel like I got the, the, experi the experience, not experiment, that you have once the honeymoon phase passes. So I don't know how clear my vision is of how China was, but it was a great experience and I don't regret not really working on Mandarin because I learned so much just while I was there communicating with the people who actually knew it as their native language because when you're learning languages from somebody who speaks your language and they learned it as their second or third language, it's not gonna be as effective as learning it from somebody who is a native speaker. And then the third would be Dutch. And I don't like living with regrets. I really don't but everything that I learned in Dutch, I had to unlearn when I moved to Belgium. And it just irritates the crap out of me because all the language resources that I bought, I bought in Belgium. And I don't know why, but when you buy language resources in Belgium, it's Dutch, not from Belgium, but from the Netherlands. And it may not seem like a big thing, but accents is what's going to trip you up. This is a problem that I had with French because in America, we don't learn French from France. We learn French from Quebec. And I knew that accent. In fact, the first time I met some
somebody who spoke Quebecois, I was blown away by how much they sounded like the CDs that we had to listen to back in French class. And it's the same issue that I had with Dutch, that the people on the CDs did not sound like anybody speaking in Belgium. And I didn't understand what the heck was going on with that. And despite the fact that Belgians and the Dutch want to pretend that it is the same language that they're speaking, and I will say now that I've become more proficient in the language, I can say that it is very similar. It's just annoying because there are these differences in it. And when you learn Dutch, and you go to Belgium, for example, lopen, I learned, mean to walk. So I would tell people, ik hol van lopen. And in my mind, I was saying, I love to go for walks, which I do. But in Belgium, they understood that I love to run. And I don't, I hate to run. Running is the sport of the devil, like no. And so that led to, you know, some miscommunication haps when you're telling people in your mind that you like to walk and they understand that you love to run. And it's just little tiny itty bitty things like that. Or like little pronunciations like het and hut. They don't pronounce the same article the same way and it's just, uh, it's so irritating because everything I learned, I had to unlearn and I still screw them up because they're so ingrained in my memory and I don't know, I think it's a sort of a personal choice of what you're going to do before you go abroad and what your options are. And unfortunately, I think if your starting point is America, you're so screwed. You just, oh, you are, especially if the languages that you want to learn is Spanish or French, because the Spanish that we learn in the US is from Mexico, it's not from Spain. I mean, even in Dutch, I still have problems because I'm so good at the West Flemish accent. But we go to East Flanders where Prince Charming's family is located and I have to listen so hard and concentrate because their accent is just a tiny, itty bitty little bit different and it's just, it just, just everything I learned just goes out the window. And unfortunately, when you're not that proficient in the language, you don't think, oh, maybe it's the accent. You just assume that you're stupid and you don't know the language. And it's just, it's frustrating. I had that for a really long time in French. My host mother spoke French beautifully. Everything she said, I understood it, but it was only her and I couldn't understand what was wrong with my brain because I couldn't understand anybody else, specifically my host father. My host father, it took me forever to understand what he was saying. And near the end of the experience, my host mother pointed out that he had a Parisian accent, which is probably why I couldn't understand him. And oh, just. I'd love to know from you guys, if you've learned a new language, what was the thing that you found the most difficult? For me, obviously it's the accent. You know, I think learning a list of words, it's all just about memorization, you know, spelling, you can write lines. Again, it's just memorization, but actually having to listen to somebody and understand them, that listening comprehensive skill, that is so hard because you either know it or you don't. It's not something you can really study. Anywho, that's what I have from you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up or, you know, give it a thumbs down. As long as you interact with my videos, really, the algorithm gods don't care because I'll be winning. Be sure to leave me your comments. As you can see, I do read them and occasionally I will create a video and answer them. If you're new here, hi, I'm Catherine, by the way. Um, hit that subscribe button because the mighty algorithm gods would not have suggested you to my video if we weren't meant to be best friends forever. So just hit the button, please. I I'm likable. <laughs> I am, I think so. Why don't you wanna be my friend? Anywho, that's what I have for you guys this week and I'll see you guys in the next video. Toot scenes, my apple scenes. I went to the dentist today to get the permanent filling for the root canal that I had a couple weeks ago and I love my dentist, but she was causing me so much pain today and I felt so bad because she's so sweet and so kind and I'm there jumping and going, ow, ow, but I now have my permanent filling and my tooth doesn't hurt anymore, but holy crap, it hurt so much. Just